Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session of Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining us. We are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this morning, we shall be looking at the recent information coming from the, uh, let me just pull out this name of this international organization called the International uh, Commission on um, what is it called again? The CIDH, right? That's the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, I think, right? I think that is coming from the International Commission of Human Rights, right? That is the organization. And this organization always comes to fore, come to the fore, or come to the surface, I should say, when it's talking about the relationship between Dominicans and and Haitians, right? And it was reported yesterday in the List in Diario newspaper uh, that the International Commission of Human Rights recently issued a declaration that there is still, well, it's, it's, it's a report that was actually issued that there is discrimination in the Dominican Republic against the people of Haitian descent and also Dominicans of Haitian descent. So you have discrimination against Haitians who have come over into this island, who have traversed, who have migrated to this island in search of a better way of life. For those of you who don't know, the Dominican Republic and Haiti share the same island, and the island is called the island of Hispaniola, right? And we know that this island was founded in 1492. But because of the colonial and the imperial quest for dominance in the region of the European imperialism and European colonialism, then we had that this island was divided because you had Spain and France. And even the British were actually fighting over the island, which they did not get, by the way. But they were also um, desirous of having this island. We understand that it was when... Um, What's his name again? The two discoverers of Jamaica that Penn and his team um, came here and they fought and did not get it that they actually landed in Jamaica and got Jamaica in 1655. But, you know, the French and the Spanish, they battled for this island and France ceded this island from Spain just in the 17th century, thereabout. Now, since the, you know, the, the, colonial and the imperial quest for dominance, we've been having a lot of rift on this island between the two different um, ethnic groups, right? And, you know, we have that Dominicans are largely mulattoes and largely what we call brown-skinned, you know, people. And you have uh, the Haitians, which comprise mainly dark-skinned people. Um, but they share the same island, and that has been something um, uh, that is interesting to observe and to watch. Now, we know that Haiti is deemed, is described as the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, and the DR has a booming economy. So what we find is that loads of Haitians, lots of Haitians come here um, in search of a better life, in search of jobs, right, so that they can provide for their families. The situation is that even though the Dominican Republic has a booming economy, there are still a significant number of its population which are in poverty, right? And, um, well, I should say it, a significant number of the population who um, remains in poverty. So it means, therefore, that the island, that's the island of the Dominican Republic, they do not have all of the resources to be able to feed both populations. And it seems to be that it's creating a rift because you have the Dominicans who will complain that they need jobs and they see Haitian working. The problem is because of globalization, it is the, the survival of the fittest. So what because of this free market system, what we have in this free market system is a system in which um a system in which the you these you know what we call now these capitalists they go after the cheapest labor right the cheapest manual labor and Haiti has a large 
cheap labor force because of the fact that their island is not really producing and it's not um cannot compete as it were with the Dominican Republic. So we have that situation in the country. I'm not sure what I'm seeing this reflection on the front. Yeah, so we have that um situation in the country as it were. Now the question is, is there racism, is there xenophobia as the International Courts, uh, the National Commission of Human Rights is reporting? Yes, there is xenophobia. And yes, there is racism. But we have to understand that these are remnants of the past. And we must understand that racism and xenophobia do not only exist in the Dominican Republic, they exist in countries like the United States, in Great Britain, in Canada in almost all Western countries and even other countries also, because people are just about xenophobia. People tend not to be open, even though we tend to be living in a, we're living in a global village, but people tend to be more comfortable with people of their own kind, right? And you go to the United States, for example, and people have always looked at New York City and they have always said that New York City, even though it's a city where you have you know, lots of different ethnic groups, different racial and ethnic groups in New York City. It is one of the most segregated cities in the world. And you would not expect that from New York City, right? You would think that New York City, having been a city of what we call, you know, you know of immigration, of immigrants, right? You have different immigrants, the Italians, the Germans, the you know, the, uh, the Africans, Caribbeans, just lots of different ethnic groups that live um, in that city. Yet still, it is segregated because people tend to remain or stay within their own communities. So the Italians and the Caribbeans, whether you're Dominicans or Haitians or Jamaicans, and people tend to cling to their own kind because that is how we were made up. I think that God divided us into nations and I don't think he expected us to be xenophobic, but the fact is that we tend to be what comfortable with members of our own kind. And it, it there is a negative aspect to it and there is a positive aspect to it. Nothing is wrong to prefer to be among members of your own kind. The problem exists when you think that people of other kind are inferior, right? And that is where we have that xenophobia where you think that other people are inferior to your kind, and that is not true, right? But what it requires is education. And in the context of Dominicans, in the context of anybody, of any people, we need to be educated about each other. And so often Dominicans and Haitians do not understand each other's history. I think the Haitians do understand more of Dominican history than Dominican understanding of Haitian history. I think that the history tends to be skewed. And a lot of times we, you know, get history from a leftist perspective and we do not really study, you know, all perspectives. And it's very important that we study all perspectives because the left-wing narrative is not the entire truth, right? There are other aspects to truth because human beings are susceptible to making errors and left-wing ideology is just a narrative. And I think I find even in, within the academy, people that are tethered to this left-wing narrative that it's really leading society, Western societies to their death. We've got to look at different realities. We've got to look at different perspectives. We've got to look at different narratives. As I've been saying on this channel, I've been preaching on this channel that we are too narrow in our perspective of what history is. We've got to look at the varying degrees of analysis and how the situation works out. People tend to just look, oh, they, there is racism in the Dominican Republic, but they do not look at the factors. My analysis of what we call racism in the DR is one in which I do not think that there is any great racism among the working class. Um, yes, when things go bad and things go eerie, then you begin to hear, you know, different expressions about, you know, how you look and the color of your skin and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of what 
a lot of this discrimination comes from the upper class, from the upper echelon of society, right? In which the upper echelon has, uh, you know, indoctrinated the lower classes of Haitians and Dominicans to believe that they are one is superior and one is inferior. But when you look at the Haitian who has money and the Haitian who has a fairer uh, skin tone, skin complexion, they and Dominicans live as one. So you could be a very black Haitian and you have lots of money and you will live among Dominican elites and Dominicans quite well, right? Because money runs the show. When you go to Brazil, it's the same thing, right? In Brazil, you see that they will tell you that they have racial democracy. And the only reason why black people are at the bottom of the society, it's because they are poor, <laughs> right? They have no money. But you ask, you wonder, you ask the question, why? Why is it that the majority of the people who are poor, who are the left behind, are dark-skinned Brazilians? And they can't answer you. They can't answer that question because they don't want to, you know, detach themselves from that sort of indoctrination about this racial democracy that they have in Brazil, when there are serious structural racism in in Brazil, right? But when you look at the interactions between the typical Dominican and the typical Haitian, I do not think that there is any great division, as people suggest, and as the International Commission on Human Rights um, is suggesting, right? Uh, I think that aspects of racism need to be dealt with. And if it is caught, yes, just like we have in the United States. And I dare say, as I mentioned, the United States, that the International Commission on, on Human Rights need to be talking and calling out the United States and Canada and France for what they're actually doing in Haiti at the moment. Had it not been for the fact that Bill Clinton and other successive United States presidents, among other um, growth powers, destroyed the Haitian economy. Had they not destroyed the Haitian economy along with the Haitian elites, then the Haitians would have been in their countries and there would not have been this great rift between the two peoples, right? Between the Dominicans and the Haitians. So I think that the International Commission on Human Rights should be more calling out the United States elites, right? The, military industrial complex, along with Canada, the Canadian military industrial complex, and also France. Um, and France is the French role, actually, in this crisis um, that Haiti is going through, right? I don't think that it is fair just to look at the fact and to think that Dominicans can uh, tolerate, can have many Haitians come into the country, right? And uh, it's going to be, everything is going to be all right, you know, because there is going to be tensions, you know, because you have, I think, some people say you have 12, 13 million people living in Haiti. I know that there are about 11 million, 12 million people living in the Dominican Republic. These are islands, people. These are not big countries, right? Yes, a big population, 12 million for the, in the context of the Caribbean region. But when you look at other bigger countries, right, if these are small countries comparatively speaking, let's say to Canada, to the United States, to and to other um to you know to other countries. So the Dominican Republic cannot be able to take on the load, um, the economic load, the social problems that Haiti perhaps will bring to them. Now they are benefiting, I must say, the Dominican Republic is benefiting from the cheap labor that the Haitians bring. And that's the problem that they are exploited, it's exploited labor. However, this is where the problem is. Having exploited the labor, right? Um, then you have the social problems and Dominicans complain. I am not sure about that. They complain about the fact that there are lots of Haitians, um, Haitian women who have children in their hospitals and you know they're overloading their hospitals and taking over the resources. I am not sure about that. I can't verify that. But I think that is something that needs to be um, dealt with and needs to be properly investigated. And I think that the International Commission on Human Rights needs to have more of a vigorous um, debate, right? We need to have debate, uh, a more objective analysis rather than just, you know, throwing words, words out and hurling and telling people that they're racist and they're um, xenophobes and all of that sort of thing, right? We, we, we're living in a society in which people tend to be 
you know, using epithet sound and uh, using a lot of pejorative uh, um, expressions and words and casting them, hurting them at people. And that is not going to solve the problem. I think what we need, the problem will be solved is if we explore the history and the factors, right? The factors which are contributing, are contributing rather to the problem and not just to say that people are racist or they're mean or they're xenophobes, right? That is not going to solve the problem. I think what will solve the problem is if the United States and Canada and France should just give Haiti a break and allow them to solve their own problems and to restore their industries, right? Like their rice industries and the industries that have been um, devastated, that have been destroyed by these great powers of the West, right? I think that that will perhaps bring about some resolution. It will not solve the problem in time because the problem is very nuanced, right? Um, and it's not going to be solved just by, you know, um, putting up some, some uh, you know, rice and, you know, and manufacturing some uh, local Haitian uh, products. I don't think that is going to just solve the problem. It's not going to be solved easily because this problem has been ongoing and has been happening for many, many years, right? But again, it is not fair to blame Dominicans uh, alone for the problems that Haiti is actually um, experiencing. I think that it is a design, right? It's a plot, it's a ploy by the United States and other um, European powers, right? European elites to distract the global population from what they're doing and to put the light on the Dominican Republic. And so often it is the ordinary Haitian and the ordinary Dominican who are impacted negatively by what is happening globally. The Haitian elites and the Dominican elites tend to live quite well, and they benefit from the sort of exploitation from both ends, right? Because both sides of the population are exploited because if you, if the Dominican elites were prepared to pay Dominicans, what they deserve, a, 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 a livable wage, a livable salary, then what they do, they, um, you know, they call for lots of patients to come over who will work because they are living in destitution in Haiti. So they come and they work and they get a lower salary and Dominicans remain without jobs, right? And that is a very, very, uh, you know, sticky matter. And it is a problem that needs to be solved and needs to be spoken about, right? But I think that we tend to, you know, um, to, to, we push that this problem under the rug and we, we just shout racism and xenophobia and think that just shouting racism and xenophobia as if the problem is going to go away. Now, another thing before I end this video, racism and xenophobia cannot be solved by legislation, right? Because these, you know, sort of behavior or behaviors, I should say, come from the heart, right? People have to understand that we are human beings, right? And we come from the same species, right? And that despite our colors, just like you have different animals with different colors, but they belong to the same species, right? Whether they're birds, right? Or they're lions or they're tigers whatever, right? We are human beings and that is who we are. It doesn't matter what you know, country you might emerge from or you know what the color of your skin is. I think that's what we need to attack. And that has to come from two sources, from education, from our secular education system and from the churches, from the Bible, because we were biblically made. That's why the United States, even though it did not live up to its entire ordeal or ideal of freedom, but it did say that we are created equally, all right, um, by our creator, that God is the one who created, who made us, and that we were created in his image, created he, them, man, and woman, all right? So the fact of the matter is that we cannot say, coming from the same source, from the same species, that one is inferior or the other 
is superior. That does not work like that. The problem is that we do have inferior economies and we do have superior economies. The economies of Hungary as well are superior, right? And we do have superior educational systems. And these things do not come because of, you know, a natural occurrence that is just because you know because some people are living in poverty it means that all that they were made to live that way if we look closely at history and the political maneuverings we will see that these factors come about because of human selfishness and human xenophobia and human racism right and so often the same people who are crying out racism and xenophobia are the same ones who are vouching for or supporting what these global powers are doing. Because if they were not vouching for, and if they were not supporting what these global powers are doing, then they would have called them out. But I have never heard, you could correct me, um, the International Commission on Human Rights calling out the United States, calling out Canada, calling out France for the role right, that they're playing in Haiti and the fact that they have squashed that country, the fact that they have exploited Haiti and its people and have left them without nothing. And that is why they are immigrating to the Dominican Republic among other countries. But because they share the same island with the DR, with the Dominican Republic, it's easier for them to cross the borders and get them here. I don't have to talk about the the business that you know that is involved in this immigration process where they have to oil the pans of these immigration officers, right? And they make money, it's a business, right? So it's more than what we can think about, right? This whole matter of the patients coming here is a big business, not only for the immigration officers, but for the economic elites, the financial elites of the Dominican Republic, and also the global elites. So let's be careful about what we disseminate, the information that we disseminate. I think that the island of Hispaniola is a blessed island, it's a beautiful island, and I think that the people who inhabit the island are also beautiful people, and generally speaking, apart from the economic um, rivalry, <laughs> right, that they have so often, I think that they live in, in, in harmony, right? I just think that the Haitian economy needs to be built up, and I think that the exploitation of the people, of the descendants of Toussaint Louverture, right, and these great men of Haiti, I think that if these economic problems are solved, right, I think the Haitians can remain on their island, and if those who come are not necessarily going to come, they come by choice and not because they are rehearsed to doing so, right? So this is my thoughts on the situation. I do not think that we can just cry out racism and xenophobia and not look at the root causes of the rift, right, of the rivalry between Haitians and Dominicans. Thank you so much for joining. Please be sure to like and to share and to subscribe. I'll see you in another video when I'm shadowing you. All the best to you. Bye.